Hello, this is the story of Chili's. The story of Chili's is actually, necessarily, also sort of the story of Brinker International, the parent company that owns the Chili's brand of restaurants. In 1967, Larry Levine, a young man fresh off a failed attempt at a music career, attended the inaugural Terlingua Chili Cook-Off, hosted in Terlingua, Texas. The Chili Cook-Off was hosted by none other than racing legend Carol Shelby who coincidentally was Larry Levine's father-in-law. From that moment on, Mr. Levine was hooked on the concept of the chili cook-off. A few years later, on March 13, 1975, Larry Levine would open the first Chili's restaurant where they served gourmet burgers and french fries and were known for having lines out the door. Around this time, in 1978, a man by the name of Doug Brooks would also begin working at Chili's but more on him in a bit. Throughout the rest of the 1970s, Larry would continue expanding the number of Chili's locations. Continuing into the 1980s, things were still going very well for Chili's. By this time, they had opened 23 locations spread across six different states. This success caught the attention of famed restaurant tycoon Norman Brinker. Larry Levine has stated that it was always his intention to sell Chili's, and in 1983, that's exactly what he did, with Brinker International taking control of the Chili's chain of restaurants. This was only the beginning, though, as Brinker had big plans for Chili's. Following shortly after the acquisition, Chili's was listed on the NASDAQ and announced their IPO. This led to a series of expansions and changes, including to the menu. In 1984, Chili's added fajitas to their menu, followed in 1986 by their baby back ribs. This was also the first time their now famous Baby Back Ribs jingle hit the airwaves. The menu wasn't the only thing to expand though, as Chili's Inc. acquired Romano's Macaroni Grill in 1989. The 1990s is the period in which Chili's evolved from a small regional chain into the brand that everyone knows and recognizes today. For most people outside of the American Southwest, sometime in the 90s is probably when you first remember visiting a Chili's restaurant. In 1991, Chili's officially took the title of their parent company, Brinker International. In that same year, Chili's opened their first international restaurant in Canada, followed shortly after with a restaurant in Mexico in 1992. In 1994, after 11 years at the helm, Norman Brinker retired, appointing Ron McDougall as the new CEO of Brinker International. However, Norman would remain on as chairman of the board. Despite these changes, though, In 1996, Chili's would go back to their gourmet burger roots, introducing the Big Mouth Burgers to their menu. By the 2000s, Chili's was well on its way to becoming a brand recognized all over the world. 2002 would see Chili's team up with pop sensation NSYNC, who performed a cover of the famous Baby Back Ribs song. In 2004, Ron McDougall stepped down as Brinker CEO. In his place, Doug Brooks was appointed as chairman of the board and CEO of Brinker in addition to his president title. This is the same Doug Brooks that first started with Chili's back in 1978. And finally, on August 3rd, 2004, Chili's opened their 1,000th restaurant at Pinnacle Park in Dallas, Texas. Which brings us nearly to the present. As of 2014, there were more than 1,600 Chili's in 33 countries and two territories. Every year, Chili serves roughly 281 million customers. A few quick stats. Chili's customers consume about 60.4 million pounds of fajita meat every year and roughly 20,000 miles of its famous baby back ribs. Chili's also claims that it serves enough burgers that put end to end, they would stretch for 3,000 miles. In 2013, Doug Brooks stepped down as Brinker CEO and president, but would remain as chairman of the board. Wyman Roberts was appointed as Brinker President and CEO, in addition to his President of Chili's title. While he takes the reins of a popular brand with a strong history, the fast casual industry as a whole is entering a period of uncertainty. And what happened to Larry Levine, the man who started it all? Well, he's still going at it as of today. Larry now runs a restaurant consulting group called Turtle Creek Restaurant Group. He also continues to open new restaurant projects his latest being a barbecue restaurant called 1050 Barbecue, located in Richardson, Texas. So it would appear that after 40 years, the founding and sale of a massive restaurant chain 
and a number of additional restaurant endeavors, Larry is still happy to set up shop not too far from where he started at all. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If so, please like and subscribe. Also, make sure to check us out on SmartyFlix.com, a new streaming video service that will be dedicated to bringing you entertaining and educational video content. Sign up to be notified when the service launches at SmartyFlix.com.